Let's get one thing straight from the get-go. Whenever you hear an album title such as Madness, you have a bit of an expectation. No, this isn't like Muse going mad, mad, mad. We're talking about all that remains. It's something that should give you an expectation about what this band and what this album is going to be all about. However, All That Remains has not necessarily been able to fulfill some of those expectations in the past couple of years. The past few albums, the band that has transcended metal, has now returned in 2017 with Madness, an album that is going to go down in the history books one way or the other. Is this going to be true to its name, or is it going to be another befuddling moment in a band's career that at one point seemed like it was going to be a highlight-filled uh, resume? So let's take a listen to this disc, let's find out what this 13 track affair has to offer us. And the first thing that we get with Safe House is something that's a little more resembling to what All That Remains was during the initial portions of their career that we see spikes and splurges of every once in a while, but never in a consistent manner. Now some people will say, and I've said for years, that metalheads are just absolutely focused on the past. They can't accept anything that's brand new that a band is doing. Well, that's any fan base. Really, don't be so narrow-minded. If Beyonce all of a sudden decided she was going to go from being the queen of pop to the queen of jazz country, I'm sure there'd be a couple people scratching their heads like, what the hell did I just listen to? But Safe House pulls the wool over the eyes once again and turns into a deathcore song at the end and not even a good one. That's the bad part about the second half of this opening track off of this album. It seems very simplistic, extremely hokey. There, you, you can't even use the word direct to really uh, regard this song. It's one that actually goes almost down to like the ABC school learning of deathcore, almost as though you're just trying it out for the very first time, and yet this is a band that has the metalcore veneer, which really it's not that far of a leap to hop over to the deathcore cousin. This sounds like some sort of freaky music incest. It's only going to get worse. Trust and Believe is one that is able to sort of stay within the safe house border, but then we get to Back to You, and this is where this whole entire album starts to become another conundrum factory. As this track literally sounds like All That Remains got an invitation to be on The Voice, or on American Idol, or one of those shows where they invite you to write a song, and you have to perform it, and it's gotta be in this like style that's going to impress the judges because they want you to be the next pop star. They don't want you to be the next rock or metal star. They don't want you to be the next Metallica. They want you to be the next jiggy, jiggy, dancey, dancey, oh, and singing sad songs that have a lot of heart to it that people are gonna give a crap about, supposedly, for five seconds. And that's what this song comes off as. Now, to be fair, on a lyrical uh, side, on a compositional side, not too bad. This is one that does have a lot of heart, but on this album feels sincerely out of place. And Phil's vocals, by the way, are terrible. That's the one thing I'm going to say. A lot of people are going to say, well, there's way too much clean singing on here. There's way too much crap that sounds like it belongs in some sort of, like, pop metal department. What happened to this band? Phil's vocals aren't horrible. The lyricism at times is tremendously simplistic. The composition is all over the place. And Phil himself has said that this is supposed to be more of a vocal album. So, is this a shock? Is this something that's all that crazy? And... The response to that is that it, it, it should be, but it is. And the reason why that it is is that many people will feel that All That Remains has done a lot of things. They have done a lot of things in their career to sort of transition or transcend metal. This is almost like the last straw. Most folks that have already given up on this band but figure that they give this a listen just for the yuckles and the fucks and the chuckles... Uh, will hear this song and will feel like they called this from the get-go. They'll feel like this has been the full expectation of the circle that has transformed this band into something completely different. And then the remainder of this album becomes this sort of confusing confetti of multiple styles. And usually, whenever you have multiple styles sort of intersect on a disc, it's good because it gives it variety. It gives it something that is uh, really unexpected around the next corner. You kind of look forward to the next track with a positive attitude, wondering 
what experiment is going to be attempted by the band next that's going to perhaps give your ears something that maybe you haven't heard before, or at least not in a while. But instead, what we get here is a sort of circle jerk between the modern metal movement, the semi-metalcore movement, the little occasional spike of deathcore once again, the rock movement, and then we get, of course, these ballad you know, slower style songs that kind of just pop up and make you realize that Back to You is not some sort of one-trick pony. It's not a fluke. It isn't something that they just opted to do for a for instance. It's instead something that they opted to really use as a pattern of development. It's something where they are heading. It's a direction that they are going and they have now gone and they are there. They have become one with the direction. All in all, the main problem with this album is this sort of confetti of styles that sprinkle past. None of them are really executed in a very well fashion. That's a horrible sentence, but whatever. It, it's not something that's handled very well. It, it's instead something that feels like the average or the, you know, what's sort of expected within the confines of the popular music idea or what makes money is sort of good enough. I don't feel that this album did nearly enough to try to explore different av these different avenues uh, that the band wanted to take a look at in as opposed to just sort of you know, test the waters a little bit and do the very basic elements of it while trying to also put an ATR spin on it. And there isn't really even that much of that either. Some of these tracks are halfway decent to listen to every once in a while, but then you get the tracks such as uh, If I'm Honest, either that or even uh, the title track Madness, and you almost kind of wish that you'd go back to Safe House. You kind of want to hear some, like, Deathcore ABC School 101, you know, Sesame Street Deathcore once again, because it seems like, it, it feels like you have been deceived a little bit. It really does. It's one thing to lead off an album with a really positive, a real, you know, a huge song that makes the whole entire rest of the disc sound like, you know, you anticipate the rest of it. But this is a track that didn't really do that, but you want to go back to it because everything else feels so disjointed and far away from it. You're wondering what planet you landed on. You're wondering if you landed in some all-that-remains satellite system of moons. And each moon is slowly colliding into one another like billiard balls. And you have to jump from one to the next to avoid getting destroyed. And every single moon that you hop onto is somehow worse than the last one. And it's just something that continues into Louder, into River City, to Open Grave, which, once again, we go back to that heavier territory. I guess the only way that you can have that heavier territory is if you have a song whose title really delivers that evil side, Open Grave. Not Back to You, or Never Sorry. But then we didn't hear that same element of thunder on the Thunder Rolls. Hell, we didn't even hear something that would have made Kiss kind of feel good about God of Thunder. And then we get Far From Home to close this thing out. And admittingly, being the final track, this is where that experiment should take place. This is where that moment should really happen. And Far From Home as a closer? Eh, could do with it, could do without it. Everything here feels bland, and that's the problem. The problem is not... That Madness by All That Remains is an absolutely abysmal, terrible affair. The problem is, is that it's a confetti of styles that don't work very well together. It's something that, from track to track, instead of feeling anticipation, you're wondering where the next left or right field motion is going to come from and what it's going to be. And that's not a good anticipation. Instead, it becomes apprehension. And note how the usage of two different words with the same uh, uh, opening letter really breeds two different feelings. Anticipation. Apprehension. The tone by itself could easily be applied to the tone of this album, where you could feel like perhaps all that remains slightly turns the corner a bit and is starting to really get what this, you know, sort of one style, like maybe the modern metal style or, or even some of this modern pop metal style is all about, and then they go on to something else, and it seems like once they re-explore that initial style, they've forgotten everything, and they're going back to square one once again, and they don't make a lot of headway. That's the huge problem here. The album itself is a tolerable listen 
in spurts. This is not one that, that is very easy to stomach from inception to the final note. It is instead one that I'm sure many people will want to say it will take some time for you to digest. I, I've attempted to digest this thing for uh, way longer than I probably should have and it's not becoming easier to digest. I've needed Pepto-Bismol, I've needed a couple of antacids, I've needed some Nexium, and I still have this, this, this heartburn in the pit of my stomach. I still have this horrible feeling like I need to poop and puke at the same time. That's what this album did to me, and that's not good. It really isn't. For a band that claims to have transcended metal, it's really begging the argument that transcending metal is not something that you want to do. It's begging the argument that transcending metal was a bad idea. Is this worse than the Six Feet Under Abomination that we got earlier this year? It isn't, but not by much. This is a 9 out of 30. This is really hard to get through. And it's an album that tries its best, and I do want to say one thing uh, to all of those who are probably looking at me like, Oh, you just hate all that remains. <laughs> I gave this album a hell of a try. I really did. With each passing listen, I tried to find something else that I liked about it, and I was just coming up short each and every time. And, and usually, uh, I'm a very positive individual whenever it comes to finding some things with my analysis, and I'm traditionally being a little bit more nitpicky to try to find negative aspects. To have it be this flip-flop, to feel this sort of off-kilter and off-balance, uh, the flow of this album is being blocked by dams. There's beavers all over this damn place. It, it, this is very unfamiliar ground in the past couple of years. There's been limited moments where I have felt this sort of negative toward an album. And uh, I do give All That Remains some credit for wanting to attempt this experimentation, for wanting to go with a, an album that has a little bit more of a vocal direction, but it's just not one that worked very well. And it's kind of a shame because... Uh, I, I thought that maybe this band could pull it off and really pull off a surprise. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not very happy to find out that I was wrong, but that's life. I don't know what you guys think about Madness by All That Remains. Let me know in the comments below. I'm Cover Killer Nation, and I'll talk to you guys next time because we have Arion to speak about. Because uh, that was supposed to be done already, but it wasn't because life happened. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Later.